Hi, I'm Ellen McCauley at Pray It Up in Syracuse, New York. And I'm talking about fear because I don't think I'm a unique individual. I think I'm pretty much an average Jane Doe. And if I have so many fears, I suspect that many of you, if you don't have most of my fears, you have a lot of them. And there are fears about things with my children, my mother, my family, money, uh, health, uh, uh, the state of the world, the, the weather, driving. Uh, can I go on and on and on, you know? And so when the fear is greater than my ability to say, I don't need that extra cookie if I'm eating it because I'm stressed. I said to one of my old timers tonight who struggled over the holiday, I still, my first knee jerk reaction to stress is what can I eat? What can I eat to make myself feel better? When you have spent 55 years doing that, it is a heck of a hard habit to break. And my mother even said, she goes, does everybody lose weight in that group? And I go, no, no, mom, you know, we're on a journey and sometimes we struggle. And she said, maybe people just aren't praying enough. <laughs> and I said, well, that's an interesting <coughs> observation. And I, I don't know if it's we're not praying enough. And I thought about that for quite a while. I think it's that I'm not trusting enough. I'm not surrendering enough. I'm still trying to lift myself up by my own bootstraps. And when I do that, then the fears come in because my bootstraps are weak, I'm not so strong, I, I'm trying to do it myself. And I have a day timer for my personal life and I have one at work. And this is December 1st and I always take my little stickies in the front and I put them in the front of my December from November. And let me just tell you what a few of my little stickies say. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. Therefore I have not set my plate, I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. Oh Christ, we I say, um, there's a lot of them. I'm just going to go to a few of them here. When I am afraid in you, I place my trust. I praise the word of God. I trust in God. I do not fear. What can mere flesh do to me? I mean, I just have like 10 prayers in here about overcoming anxiety and stress. And, you know, but fear is universal. Perhaps it's even an essential human condition. If you're not afraid of getting in an accident, Maybe you don't follow the speed limit, or maybe you drink when you're driving, and maybe you just don't even look for deer at 5 o'clock in the morning. You have to be a little afraid. Of what's going on here? I just want to make sure I'm driving carefully. There's natural fear, and then there's having it be all-encompassing. There's fear of defeat, fear of failure. I know someone in the group who has struggled this session, and it's their first session, because just the thought of losing weight, they're so afraid they're going to fail that they've gained weight. And I understand that. I understand that feeling. And they talk a little bit here about religion and how so many people have turned against religion. And they say religion, you know, is, is based on fear. And religion is based on, you know, you're going to go to hell or, you know, look at the crusades, look at all these things. And this author is saying that it, it's, it's interesting to look at, but Jesus is not religion. Jesus is love. God is love. And if we look at that, if we look at God being love, it makes us want to listen more because we're trying to be more Christ-like when we want to listen to what people have to say, be non-judgmental, and that comes to ourselves. The first thing I thought of when Peg was talking about Rahab was forgiveness, forgiveness for past sins, forgiveness for past diet mistakes. There's no reason why all of us can't be very successful at losing weight if we surrender to God and we believe we can. But if we, it says right here, do I prefer to grow up and relate to life directly or do I choose to live in fear and die? I never really looked at it that way. 
when am I ever going to get over my fears? I'm 68 years old. I mean, there's, there's real fears and then there's the same old fears that you've been forever worrying about. And we need not to look at our faith as a crutch, but as our faith as the ability to trust God enough to know that no matter what happens, it's for his good and that he believes in us. And this little article next says, fear not 365 days a year. And there's a, there's a story that goes around that says, in the Bible, it says fear not 365 times. You might hear that. People say it all the time. And it's really not true that it says fear not, but there's a lot of different derivatives so that if you really looked at it, be not afraid or those sorts of things, the bottom line is the word of God is saying that our purpose here on life is to do the best we can, love God, love others, and then we will surely die like everyone before us. And we can either live in fear or we can embrace it and each day go, wow, I didn't expect that to happen. That's not what I would have wanted. That's not what I would have done. But I'm going to let that go. I'm going to let it go. I'm not going to eat over it. I'm not going to have a beer over it. Jesus, that's, that's yours because I can't do a thing about it. All these things that I fear. When my father died, I was dancing at my 15-year high school a college reunion, having a great time. I was dancing away, and they came and got me. I wasn't afraid my father was going to die. I, I was shocked. I, I wasn't expecting it. Life is going to happen whether we fear it or not. These things are going to happen. It, was I not supposed to go to my 15 year? He wasn't in intensive care. He, he wasn't, you know, he did have bad rheumatoid arthritis, but he died in his sleep. The fact of the matter is we can either fear life or we can live our lives. And I'm getting really tired of fearing things. And you know, I can feel sorry for myself because the kids can't come home for Christmas, but they didn't come home last year because Vegas, whatever, work, etc. We had a great time. And then we saw that one in January, one in April. You take what life gives you and you make it the best you possibly can. And then it talks about surrendering the, surrendering the fear about weight loss. And the only limits in life are the ones we create for ourselves. And I love this. It says, you need to have a starring role in your own life. And that's especially important for us. Many of us in this room, we went right from being kids and going to college, getting married, having our own children. And I don't know about you guys, but... I got a job and had my own kids, and I really didn't rely on my parents. Seems like this generation right here is a little needier than we were. Is it me? Is it me? It just seems they're a little needier than we were. So I said to Bob the other day, I said, when is it Bob and Ellen time? And is that unchristian? I mean, God says love yourself and love others. And I said, we need to concentrate. And I don't, I, there'll always be Bob and Ellen pray it off. This is part of Bob and Ellen time. So don't think I said, I'm, I'm disbanding pray it off for Bob and Ellen time. No, this, this is part of Bob and Ellen time. But we need to have the starring role in our own movie. You know, I, I've been a supporting player. And the thing is, when I read over that listening prayer, so often when somebody has a problem, the first thing I want to do is, well, how can I make it better? Do they need money? Do they need this? Do they need this? Do they need that? Do they need this? You know, maybe our generation's a little bit, I didn't go to my parents for money because they didn't have any. You can't get blood from a stone. If I said to my mother, can I have a hundred bucks? She would have been like, yeah, right. You know? So that is a key there too. The greatest, listen to this statement. The greatest tragedy in life is staying the same, never changing, never growing, never being the star in your own movie. We need, no matter what age we are, to take a look at our lives and say, you know what, I want to pay attention to, to me. I'm going to be loving and kind and generous, but I need to have a little bit more of a starring role. And then we can believe in the fear, and it can hold us hostage. 
I'll never lose weight, I'll never keep it off, I, I keep gaining, I, I like food too much, I like this, I like that. Or we can say, you know what, it's going to be a struggle, it's going to be a journey, but how great that every Thursday night I can share it with all these people who feel the same way I do. Surrender to who you are. Align your mind with the truth of your being. I'm not perfect. But I'm the only Ellen McCauley there is, ever was, or ever will be. And it's time for me to put the past behind, star in my movie, and try to be at peace. Oh, oh, that word, peace. Oh, it's just, you know, we got invited to go to a bar tomorrow night to listen to a band play. And I said to Bob, if I was 25, I'd be there. But to me, my nightgown and Netflix does sound so much better. You know? I mean, there'll be days in Bob and Ellen time when I will want to go to a bar and listen to a band, but that day is not tomorrow, okay? You give, I love this, when you are in alignment with your true nature, true nature, you will be at peace. You do this by giving the mind a new employer, your soul. Your soul directs your mind. You align and surrender your fear to God, the higher mind and infinite intelligence that connects to all. You connect with this mind by asking for his guidance and help in prayer and meditation. And you ask God to direct your thinking. It's not that we're not praying enough. It's that we're not listening enough. God's been telling me to have more Bob and Ellen time for a long time. And I say, yeah, 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 I know, I know, but I want to do this first, and I have to do this first. And he's saying, you want that peace, Ellen? To get to the other side, you must surrender. You surrender your fear to find your love, the truth of your being. And then real quick, is fear making you keep the weight on? Now, you might be afraid that people have too much <coughs> expectations for you. Oh, you joined that weight loss group, you're not losing enough weight, you're a failure. This next one's got a lot of credence though, fear of attractiveness. If you were abused as a child, if you had some issues with things and, and problems, if you will, there might be a part of you that is afraid to be attractive. I had a woman who was afraid that men might be attracted to her and she might stray from her husband. I mean, people have certain fears. Fear of losing your identity. I, st I still think of myself as a 370 pound person. Sometimes I'll be walking to work and I, there's a lot of glass and I'll look, I go, well, I don't look that fat. You know, sometimes I look at myself and I go, oh, I thought you were fatter than that. Do you ever look at yourself and say, I thought you were fatter than that? I do that. Oh, somebody's out there. No, but I do. I said I thought you were better than that. We don't even see ourselves when one's identity has been shaped by having a large presence. The prospect of becoming smaller can feel unusual. The work lies in disentangling the role weight actually plays from the power we give it. I'm the same person. At 300 to 50, 200, I'm healthier. I want to move more. I'm going to stop right there, Bob. 